morning, great morning, Cedar Creek Community Church. I am so glad that you have logged on this morning to join me for our virtual worship service. I know we, we would want to be here in the sanctuary, but we're not. But thanks be to God, we still have a way to be together. Amen. So I pray that you are in the safety and the warmth of your own home, ready to give God the glory. So can we come on right now and give God some praise? Can we give God some praise? So what I want you to do is go ahead and get yourself ready to have some church at the house. Amen. Glory to God. Let's get ready to have some church at the house. So when we got some music playing, I want you to stand up and clap your hands just like you was here in the sanctuary. I want you to give God glory, lift your hands, clap, shout, sing, whatever you need to do because we are in worship. I said it, we are in worship. So go ahead right now and text someone. Yes, text somebody, call somebody, let them know my church is online. It's time for church. Pastor is here. We're going to be singing. We're going to be worshiping. Somebody you know need a word, tell them right now. You need to be watching this. So go ahead and share it. Let everybody know that Cedar Creek Community Church is online and we are ready for worship. I said we are ready for worship. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 So can we pray? Can we pray today? Can we pray to start this worship off? Because we want God to be with us. Wherever we are, the Bible says where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. So right where you are in your house, the presence of God can be there. And I promise you, I declare and decree that if you begin to worship him right now, he will meet you there. That's why the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So I need you to start right now telling God, thank you, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Create an atmosphere of worship right in your house, right in your house, right in your home. Create an atmosphere of worship where you are giving God the praise. And so we're going to join together. If you will connect with my spirit, hallelujah. Come on, let's connect in the spirit right now that God will have his way in this virtual worship service. Hallelujah. God's going to have his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. Thank you, God, that you have allowed us to see another Sunday. Thank you, God, that you have allowed us to come together in worship one more time. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for how you have moved so far in our lives with this year. This is our year, God. Not only is it a new year, but it's a new us, God. A new, uh, we got a new mindset that you're going to change us for the better. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you are doing a great thing in our lives. So right now, God, I ask that you wash us fresh. Wash us clean with your precious blood from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, God, that is there for the remission of our sins. So we, co we commit our sins to you right now. We, we, we tell you, God, that we're sorry. God, we thank you that you are giving us another chance, God, that you're, the, the blood of Jesus Christ God, washes us. And we thank you that you are forgiving, God, that you are God that will allow us to come before you, God, and tell us, tell, us, tell you our problems tell you our situations and you will hear God we thank you God that your ear is inclined to us so right now we say Lord move on our behalf we say Lord make a way out of nowhere we say Lord heal deliver and set free right now in the name of Jesus Christ God you know the problems in this world you know what we are facing right now so we say Lord handle it like only you can God we can't fix it but you can hallelujah so we say Lord do it right now in the name of Jesus God we thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your delivering power. Oh God, we thank you God that you are watching over us. We thank you for keeping us like the old saints say, God, through danger seen and unseen. So we thank you right now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor right now and we give you the praise. So have your way in this virtual service. God, let us feel like we're in the sanctuary. Let us feel like we're in the church, God, right in our homes, in our offices or wherever we are. Let us feel your glory, God. Fill us up. Hallelujah. You are omnipresent. You can be right here in the sanctuary at somebody else's house, at another person's house, on their job, at an office building. God, you can be there all at the same time doing whatever, whatever, whatever we need you to do. So we say thank you right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We praise you. Move by your power, God. Move by your anointing.
anointing. Move by your spirit right now in the name of Jesus, God. We are your people, God. We are your people. So move for us right now. Do it for us right now, even in our homes, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we prepare our homes. We prepare our hearts and our minds to receive you right now. In the name of Jesus, it is so. It is well and it's already done. Let everybody say in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to have a little praise and worship. So while, while the music is going on, I want you to act like you right there with, with the people singing. Hallelujah. Act like you're in the concert. Act like you're at the sanctuary. Act like you're at the place. And stand up. Clap. Give God glory right now as we begin to worship and praise his holy and righteous name. Don't forget to share it if you haven't already shared this broadcast. I put that together like this. That's it. We're gonna have good old church. Can I hear the good time? Look good time, please. Come on. A little bass, please.
every day. Choir, it's your time to come in soft now. Come on.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I love to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every day, your name is the same. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. I pray that you enjoyed those songs of worship. Very familiar songs that we've sung here at Cedar Creek. So we actually got to hear it from the real artists. Hallelujah. We had some special guests today. Hallelujah. Cedar Creek, we had some special guests, recorded artists with us today in worship. So I thank God for all of you. I pray that you are enjoying this service. Stay the whole time now. Don't you go nowhere because there is a word from the Lord, from your pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. So right now, this is our giving time. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. We know there's not a debt that we owe, but it's a seed that we sow. The Bible reads, the Bible tells us that we give, it shall be given to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I don't know about you, and Cedar Creek, I remind you of this all the time. We should be ready for the overflow. Anybody ready for the overflow? Open up a window of heaven, hallelujah, God, and pour out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. I'm ready for the blessing. Are you ready for the blessing? Glory to God. There are many ways that you can give. You can give by Givelify, you can give by Cash App, and that will be posted here that so you can see it. And you can also, if you haven't already done so, contact one of the officers of the church if you want to give your cash or your check, and they will make sure they get your offering. And so if the seeds can be sown, because this is good ground, amen, this is good ground here at Cedar Creek. And we thank God for your faithful sacrifice, your faithful stewardship, not to me, not to this just church, but to the kingdom of of God. We are putting a good seed into a good ground, expecting a great harvest. So somebody ought to give God praise, hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God honor for being such a wonderful provider. All we have needed, his hands have provided. So that's why we sing the song, great is his faithfulness, hallelujah. So we bless every tither, we bless every seed sower in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless the work of your hands. I bless everything that you do in this season because you're doing it unto God. So it's time for the word. Somebody shout, it's time for the word. Amen. It's time for the word. So go ahead and get your Bibles open. Get your notepads out. Whatever you need to do so that you can receive the work. Clear out all distractions. Get your mind focused on Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get to a place of worship. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, come on right now. Come on, come on and give God glory. Hallelujah. Come on, get your mind. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, shrine and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary lord for you hallelujah glory to god i say lord prepare me to be a sanctuary hallelujah pure and holy glory to god tried and true and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, oh, Lord, for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, for you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him glory. Hallelujah, Lord, for you. Whatever you want me to do, God, I'm going to do it all. Lord, for you. If you want me to pray, if you want me to give, I'm going to do it for you, Lord. Lord, for you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Come on, prepare your hearts as we go into this word. Get your Bibles open so that we can receive a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, it's all for you. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Assist me in ministry at Macedonia. Amen and amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. If you can turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 107th chapter that was already read in your reading. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, 
God, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory, God. Hide me behind the cross so the people can see and hear only you today, God. 
We thank you, God. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. It is so. It is well, and it's already done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen, amen and amen. <laughs> Psalms 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 2 again, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom we have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. This morning I want to talk from the topic, I've got something to say. I've got something to say. God in his creative genius gave creatures the ability to make sounds. Dogs bark, cats meow, cows moo, the horses neigh, pigs oint, the lions roar, the snake hisses, the bear growls, and the chicken chirps. But we're the only creature that's been given the ability to speak. And we're able to train animals, but they can't train us. Because God has given us dominion over the earth and has given us a power in our mouth. But it's up to us how we use that power. It's up to us that we use that power. The word of God tells us that power of life and death is in our mouth. It's in the tongue. And, but how are we using our mouth? <laughs> what are we using our mouth for. You see, in school, you know, our young adults, we've been to college, we have to take a class called speech. And in order to graduate, and if those you haven't taken a speech class, you may become a member of a group called Toastmasters to learn how to speak in public. Some of us are great orators that can give great speeches that sound real good, but don't mean a thing. We can talk real proper, Reverend Torres. You know how they get the good church voice on and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But they ain't got no power. We can be real eloquent and have all these long prayers, but they're not getting any farther than this ceiling because we have no power behind what we say. And like the old saints used to tell us growing up, you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. Because when something comes out your mouth, it's hard, almost impossible to take it back. You can, you can apologize and you can ask for forgiveness, but once it's put out there, it's out there. So you have to watch what comes out of your mouth. So young adults, because it's your day, what are we saying? What are we using our voice for? Whether you believe it or not, our voice, it matters. <laughs> it, it matters and we have to open up our mouth and begin to say something that has power. So what are we using our voice for? There's so much stuff going on in the world, but the church is quiet. We, we have so many issues of things going on, but the church has nothing to say. And, and you say, I'm reading my Bible, but what are you saying? You say, I'm praying, but what are you saying? You said, I've given my offering, but what are you saying? What is your voice saying about Jesus? Like I said, the church has become too quiet. And we should be making some noise. <laughs> but we should be making some necessary noise. It's a difference. 
Because a lot of times we make unnecessary noise. You know when we complain, talk about because it's not doing it our way, or when we, or when we talk about one another and <laughs> stab each other in the back, and when we talk about the church and what they're not doing instead of worrying about what we're doing. <laughs> We do a lot of unnecessary noise. But the church needs to start making some necessary noise. And let me tell you what necessary noise is. It's our praise. You see, praise is necessary noise. David wrote this psalm of thanksgiving. This text is a praise hymn for past, present, and future works of God. And some of the theologians say that this psalm points toward Jesus. The writer was encouraging us to praise him even before he came. I wonder, can you praise him before he comes? Hallelujah. They didn't even know when he was coming, but they was giving him glory because they knew he was on the way. Hallelujah. They didn't even know what day, what a year that Jesus might jump on the scene, but they was praising him before he came. Verse 2 in this text says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. You see, whatever others may think or say, the redeem have an overwhelming reason for declaring the goodness of the Lord. Theirs is a peculiar redemption, and for it we ought to render a peculiar praise. Amen. <laughs> we ought to give God a crazy praise because some of us know if we truly look at our situation, it was nobody but God that got us out of it. And it's crazy because I should have been dead. Hallelujah. It's crazy because I should have been strung out on drugs. It's crazy because I should have been on Bull Street. Hallelujah. It's crazy because I should have been down at the Oliver Gospel Mission. But take a look at me now. Now, and it was nobody but a crazy God that could have gave me this crazy deliverance. And that's why I got to give him a crazy praise. And for you English majors, we look at this word so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. So is a conjunction that means and for this reason. So let the redeemer of the Lord say for this reason. You got a reason to praise the Lord, huh? <laughs> you got a reason to praise the Lord. And for this, I give him praise. So the writer was trying to tell us reasons why that we should be able to say something. The first reason is that the Redeemer is so glorious. We serve a glorious, a great, an awesome, and a mighty God. We should be talking about our Savior. We should boast in the Lord at all times. I don't know about you, but I can't stop talking about him because he's been so good. Can't stop talking about him because he's been so kind. Hallelujah. You know how it is when you get a good man or a good woman. Everybody that you see, you telling them about what she's done for you. <laughs> Everybody that you see, you telling them about what he's done for me. And you know how, especially at the beginning of the relationship when they're treating you real good, that's all you can talk about how good this man or woman is until they get on your nerves. Amen. Until they do something you don't like, then you stop talking about your man or woman. Uh -huh. Y'all keep it real with me today. It's the same way about our God. When you first get saved, we can't shut you up about Jesus. When you first come down here and give Pastor Scott your hand, you're on fire, you're excited, and every time somebody see you, how you doing? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored. The Lord is good and His mercy endure forever. You raising your hands, you shouting, they can't get you to sit down, but soon as life happens. As soon as you get laid off, as soon as you can't pay your bills, you begin to shut your mouth. And I come to let you know that's not a time to get quiet. That's a time to get louder. Because you got to tell your demon that regardless of my situation, the God that I serve, he's still good. He's still good. I've got something to say because 
Even though I'm in a mess, God still keeps me. Hallelujah. Even though I'm going through, I'm still here. And it's because of his grace. I've got something to say. I don't have enough time to tell it all, but I got something to say. I can't tell the whole story, but I got something to say. And I, I begin to think about Job. Job said that I know my Redeemer lives. And if you know anything about his story in Job's life, all hell had broken loose. He lost his children. All his cattle, all his livestock. And even his wife told him to cuss God and die. It would be easy for him to throw in the tower. It would be easy for him to wave the white flag and say, I'm giving up. But Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. He believed in his Redeemer. You got to have a I believe God in my spirit. Hallelujah. And regardless of what it looks like, I believe God. Hallelujah. Regardless of what they say, I believe God. Regardless of how I feel, I believe God. I wish I had about 500 people that would jump up and say, I believe God. Come hell or high water, I believe God. Sickness and pain, I believe struggling I believe God do I have a believer in here today I believe God and if you believe in him you ought to say so yes sir yes sir you ought to say so David wrote in Psalms 34 as I will bless the Lord which is my favorite scripture at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth and my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. First, now there's somebody's waiting on your praise in order to make them feel better. Somebody's waiting on you to say something. The church, its ears are open. The world's ears are open, waiting for the church to say something. Let me tell you how I know. Because when the choir was singing and the praise went forth, and that mother right there began to speak, my spirit began to leap. Because what she was saying began to make me glad. You don't know how many people are waiting for you to open up your mouth and say something to turn that situation around. Your praise is not only for yourself, it's for somebody else. Somebody's waiting on you to say something about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Revelations tells us that we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You see, the blood has already been slain, but the only thing that's waiting on your victory is you to open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And you're trying to figure out why you keep losing because your mouth closed. You're trying to figure out why you still die because your mouth closed. I dare you, if you're in a struggle today, open up your mouth and say so. Say so. Say something. Say something. Because he's been good to you. <laughs> he's been so good that you can't keep it to yourself. <laughs> and a lot of times with us that really know how good God is, people look at us crazy. <laughs> you scream too much. <laughs> You shout too much. You dance too much. You holler too loud. But you guess what? I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it to myself. Hey, hey. I said I wasn't going to shout for Jesus. But I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to leap today. But I couldn't keep it to myself. Because what the Lord has done for me and you got to tell some people you wasn't there when he saved me hallelujah you wasn't there when he delivered me you see my story but you don't know everything that I had to go through all the hell all the struggle but take a look at me now yes Lord I couldn't keep it to myself that's why you say it's rocking like this they be trying to hold it they be trying to hold it. But sooner or later, baby, you got to lose it. Because you serve a great God. The Redeemer that you serve is mighty. That's why you ought to say 
So, the second reason is that the ransom price is so great. The ransom price is so great. You see, when we become a part of a life of sin, we are kidnapped by the enemy. And when the devil kidnaps us, he places a price on our head. But guess what? Jesus died so that we could live. You see, there was a price on each and every one of our head. And I've come to let you know Jesus was the original ride or die free. Because regardless of what the situation was, he was there. And then when it's time to die, he was there. He said, no greater love than a man that will lay down his life for a friend. I don't know about you, but ain't too many of y'all I'm going to die for. But he thought I was worth saving. In my shot. He thought I was worth keeping. He thought I was to die for. You see, the devil tried to place you in bondage. He tried to chain your hands because he knew if you ever got to wave. You know? Hallelujah. He tried to chain your feet because he knew, he knew if you ever got to dance. But what he couldn't do was shut my mouth. He tried to convince you that you didn't have a reason to praise God. Because depression will let you think that you don't even have a reason to live. But I bind the spirit of depression in this place right now by the name of Jesus Christ. Loose him and let him go. Loose her and let him go because you shall live. Yes, Hallelujah. But Jesus died and gave me a reason. And I'm still here today and I've got something to say. And you know, I got a real vivid imagination and I figured that the devil, when he got you, he probably wrote God a ransom letter and said, hey God, I'm down here on earth and I'm raising hell. I've got your precious Israel and your people to turn away from you. So what are you going to do about it? You threw me out of heaven, but I've got a kingdom down here. And you're going to have to pay big in order for me to let your people go. So I believe God got the letter and started laughing and said, Satan, shut up. I'm not paying you a thing. I'll send my son and he'll pay the price on earth but get the victory in heaven, hallelujah, and set my people free. You see, the devil didn't know that Jesus was coming to tear his kingdom down. And that when he died and rose again, he was going to take all his power away from him. And I'm so glad that his life paid the price and that devil lost in the midst of me getting the victory. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. I'm so glad that he paid the price. The devil lost in the, me, in the midst of me getting the victory. And that's why I've got something to say. You see, he paid the price for us. That means he picked up our bill and we owe him. All of us in here have a bill. We can never pay it back. But guess what? We can put something on it. Hallelujah. We can never repay him. Hallelujah. But we can put a praise on it. Hallelujah. We can never give him back everything that he's given us. But we can put a praise on it. So the next time somebody say, why are you praising him like that? Why are you acting crazy? Sean, tell him I'm paying on my bill. Hallelujah. The next time you start shouting, the next time you start screaming, and they tell you to shut up, and oh, I'm paying on my bill because God's been so good. I gotta put something on it. Put a praise on it. Hallelujah. You sick in your body? Put a praise on it. You got trouble in your mind? Put a praise on it. You're going through struggle? Put a praise on it. And watch God. Watch God work a miracle. <laughs> the reason I'm saying so is because the Redeemer is so glorious. And the ransom price is so great. But the third reason is because the redemption is complete. 
You are redeemed. And the only way the devil can get you back if it should go back to him. That's the problem. Once God snatches us out of his hand, instead of walking away and staying away, we want to go back. Because we got so used to being in this mess, it got comfortable to us. It started feeling good to us. And then I was able to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, who I want to do it, where I want to do it at, because I was in my mess. But one day when you decided, God, I'm tired of me, snatch you out of his hand. You can't go back. You got to stay with God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm sticking with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay with God. I don't care how good it is back in the day when I was doing my thing. It's even better on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. It's even better on God's side. So my question today, whose side are you on? Hallelujah. Whose side are you on? I don't know about you. I'm on the Lord's side because there's joy over there. Hallelujah. There's hope over there. Hallelujah. There's peace over there. So I'm going to stay on the winning side because John 8 and 36 says if the son sets you free you are free indeed and I believe Reverend Scott the reason we put that if there is because you have to allow him to set you free it's a choice because you can stay in bondage if you want to but only a fool would want to stay in bondage when there's freedom on the other side hallelujah I don't know about you if it's freedom over there I'm going where it's free the, this verse gives us our identity as the redeemed of the Lord. So we have to open up our mouth and let people know who we are. So as I get ready to close, let me reintroduce myself to you. I used to be a drunk. I used to be strung out on drugs. I used to be in a bad relationship. I used to be out of my mind. But guess what? Now I'm redeemed. But with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. And if anybody, I said if anybody asks you just who I am, I said tell him I am Redeem. I said, tell him I am delivered. I said, tell him I am set free. I said, tell him I am revived. I said, tell him I am restored. I said, tell him I am healed. That's why you got to have a soul in your spirit. I was going through so what? God brought me out, hallelujah. I was sick, so what? God healed my body. I was poor, so what? God made me rich. I was in a mess, so what? God turned my life around. And I don't know about you, I'm glad. I said, I'm glad. I'm glad about it. That's how I praise him the way I do. That's why I shout the way I do. That's why I love him like I do. That's why I give him glory like I do. Because I've got something to say. And if you don't want to hear what I've got to say, you might as well close your ears. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Tell your neighbor if you don't want to hear me testify today, you better find you another seat because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, uh, tell that person that rode with you today, if you don't want to hear me shout, you better move out the way because when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all he's done for me, I got something to say. I've got something to say. And I wonder who will help me live Jesus. And I wonder who will help me live Jesus. Is there anybody in First Nazareth this morning that will help me live Jesus? Somebody open up your mouth and say something. I said open up your mouth and give him glory. I said open up your mouth and bless his name. Somebody shout, somebody shout glory. He's been so good, he's been so kind. Give him praise.
praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him glory. Say so, say so, say so. Open up your mouth and shout. I said shout. Yeah. Yeah.
keep going. Give him glory. Yeah. Yeah. My praise matters. My praise matters. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Somebody shout glory. I said somebody shout glory. Since I opened up my mouth and let my praise out. Since I opened up my mouth and told the Lord, thank you, I'm happy. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No music. Let me hear you. Can you say it without the music? Come on. Come on, First Nazareth. Let's send the sound up in this place. Hallelujah. That lets the devil know that we are redeemed. Come on, open up your mouth. Some of y'all ain't said nothing all service. But then next week you want to call the pastor because your light's off and you can't pay your bills. If you praise him now, God will work all that stuff out. Open up your mouth and give him glory. said if you praise me now I'll change the doctor report hallelujah somebody got an appointment tomorrow and God said if you give me praise right now what the doctor was going to say what he was going to find is going to be a race praise him now don't wait till the battle is over shine I've been bought with a price. I said, Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell it I am redeemed. Oh, I am redeemed. Can somebody testify that today? Oh, I've been born with a price. Oh, Jesus has changed. Time. 
to say hallelujah I've got something to say hallelujah my praise is speaking for me glory to God I said my praise is speaking for me it's a whole lot I want to say but I can't say it but I'm gonna let my praise talk for me hallelujah I've got something to say I pray Cedar Creek and family and friends who are all watching that you have enjoyed this virtual worship experience I pray that we'll be able to get back together soon, but until then, we will still be in worship. So I pray that your hearts have been filled with the Holy Spirit and that this message, this worship service, has given you something that you can use to keep living for God. Hallelujah. So something that you can use to overcome the enemy, something that you can use to walk worthy of what God has called you to do. I thank God for each and every one of you for joining, for staying the whole time, and make sure you keep sharing this, letting people know about the goodness of God and all that he has done for your life. Amen. Don't forget to join us on Wednesday and Thursday for our midweek worship experience. If you miss it on Wednesday, you can catch it on Thursday at 6 p.m. Wednesday, it comes on at 8 p.m. Virtual Bible study as we are talking about shifting our focus. Amen. We talked about shifting what we're looking at. Last week, we talked about shifting about what we hear. And then we're going to talk about what's in our hearts and in our minds. We're shifting our focus because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither have it in the hearts of men the great things that God has in store for you. Amen. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. That's where we will be at for um, virtual Bible study for a couple of more weeks. So join us for that and make sure you join us next Sunday right here for our virtual worship service as we continue to give God praise. Stay warm, stay safe, but most of all, stay with God. Be blessed. I pronounce the blessings of the Lord over your life. The blessings of the Lord make it rich out of no sorrow. I plead the blood of Jesus, and I say that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the head and the tail. Uh, you're ahead and not the tail, glory to God. You're above and not beneath. You're a lender and not a borrower. And yea, and all of these things, see the creek, you are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are praising our way through, and guess what? Prayer still works. So as long as I got that in Jesus, Jesus, we're going to be all right. Come on, somebody give God praise, glory, and honor. I love you so much. The blessings of the Lord are upon you. Be safe. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, I will see you on Wednesday night for Bible study.